So over to uh, so over to Jeffina. Jeffina, why don't you start off? Then then we'll come back. Uh, please, sir, can I do because I'm going to office? Can I be able to do first so that I can be able to move to the office, please? Yeah, you can definitely. Um, All right, thank you. Good morning. Um, I want to appreciate God for the privilege given to me to present my my presentation this morning. I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to talk about wasted life is a wasted wasted grace is a wasted life. Wasted grace. It's a wasted life. My text is taken from the second Corinthians chapter six, verse one and two. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse one and two. I read verse one. We then, as a workers, together with A, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Verse two. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the days of salvation as I called thee, behold. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When we're talking about wasted life, wasted grace, waste is a sinful in every realm. Whichever will be the secular, be in the ministry, be in the office, waste is a sinful in every realm. The more precious the commodity be wasted, the more sinful is wasted. The waste of energy has become more serious because of the energy shortage. The waste of the food has taken a new moral implication in the hungry world. Can you imagine someone wasting a new medit meditation that gives promise to cure cancer? Now, I'm not related to the things of God because we, as Apostle Paul said, God has given us grace to do His will. The most precious thing known to man is the grace of God. This is a term used to present the generosity of God that being salvation. When God trusts us with His grace, and however, and we misuse the grace of God, there is a danger. Praise the Lord. This is obvious, a rather serious matter. To whom is the apostle directing this appeal? The grace of God. The grace of God. When God gave us the power to heal, the sick when god gave us the power to heal the sick and we left the power and be looking for meditation going to the hospital to go and cure ourselves when god has given us the grace to heal others and we that god has given the grace to heal others we are now going about looking for medical from one hospital to another whilst the grace has been bestowed on us how do we maintain this grace? Christians can waste the grace of God. I'm saying today, many Christians today, we have wasted the grace of God. And why do we waste the grace of God? Because the Bible said, He has given us the grace. The Christian is well acquainted with the grace of God. For by grace, are ye saved? He is the family. I mean, he is the family of God because of God's loving generosity. But even though he knows personal of God's saving grace, this is not 
guarantee that the purpose of God, purpose of God's grace will be fulfilled in his life. Any child of God that wasted the grace of God is heading to hell. Any child of God that wasted the grace of God is heading to hell. And the life that head to hell is a wasted life. We saw in the story, let me use Judas Carrius as a case study. There is a grace upon him to become the chief accountant of God. There is a grace upon him to keep the treasure, to keep the money of God, but he betrayed his soul to trust life. That is, when he hung on the step, he, the, his grace, the grace of God upon his life ended when he hung himself on the cross. He hung himself on the tree. A wasted grace of God is a wasted life for God. Praise God. When we do not allow the purpose of grace, purpose of God's grace to be accomplished in us, we have wasted his grace. We do not need to be in doubt about the purpose of God's grace. A holy life is a one of the basic purpose of his grace. Paul wrote to Titus, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation as appeal to all men, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly loss. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the presence of God. When you look at the book of Titus, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, the grace of God. Why acquire this grace? Number one, when you go close to God, which he has given to you from the day you were born, there is a grace of God upon every life, both the high brothers, both the, the, the native doctors, both the, the, the politicians, both the child of God, the grace of God has been bestowed. But why did they, they allow the devil to take over that grace and use it negatively? Because of the grace. The grace of God. Apostle Paul said something, said, I have run a race. I have quenched my cross. Because of that grace, he uses it. I want to give us three keys this morning to know not to allow the grace of God to be out of our life. For example, number one, when you toy with things, you are toying with grace, and that grace will be wasted. Number two, when your grace given to you are not be used, you are wasting your life. Number three, when you're supposed to do great for Jesus and you find yourself in the midst of the ungodly, you are wasting the grace of God. How then will, will I maintain the grace of God? So that my grace, the grace God has given to me, will not be a wasted one. So that my life will not be wasted. Number one, you must love the law with all your heart. Number two, you must serve God with that grace. Number three, you must study the word of God. There, when the Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 1, he said, I mean, in the book of Joshua, he said, this book of the law will not depart from me. It's, I shall meditate day and night that I may have good success. Study of the word of God. Timothy said, I said, what's much to do? Verse 14. He said, study to show that self approve There is a grace in every life. The grace of healing, the grace of working miracle, the grace of teaching, and the grace of evangelism. The grace of study. And every child of God and they find that grace. Are you watching me? What will I do to prevent wasted lives? What do I do to prevent wasted life? No. 
You must. It's a must. The Bible commanded and said, Go ye into the world. Go ye into the world for your grace to the man. You must go into the world and multiply and preach the gospel. I believe next night percent all of us here we are pastors. How many souls have we prayed to God in a month? How many souls have we preached to in a week? How many souls have we talked to about Christ in a day? So the grace of God for you to prevent the wasted life, wasted grace, you must preach the gospel. Number two. What do I do to prevent wasted life? You know, there must be a connection with you and your maker. The world we are is a sinful world. I was telling the colleague, I said, the world we are living in is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Your connectivity with your maker is a sure. It's, it should be every day. Number three. How do I do what to prevent this? You must engage in a prayer life. When you don't pray, you become a prey, a prey to the enemy. When you don't pray, I saw Thomas, Thomas, I ran up with this. I have I ran up with this. Every grace of God that was not that's not utilized will end up in disgrace in the camp of the enemy. And I pray that God will help us so that our grace will not be wasted and our life will not be a wasted life in Jesus' name. Thank you. Um, thank you, success. Um, thank you for sharing that uh, message with us. Um, with the grace of God, wasted grace, wasted life. Right. Um, okay, so next we have uh, Jeffina. Jeffina, if you're ready, we can start right away. Yes, if you have a PowerPoint or something, you can just uh, share that. Yes, Pastor. Uh, can you just let me know after presenting whether my video is visible? I just... Yeah, sure. Am I yeah. visible, Pastor? Yeah, 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 we can see both the, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead, please. Thank Shall I sir. start the uh, thing? Yeah, I have a timer with myself too, so that I don't. Oh, you have? Okay, okay. Yeah, so I don't go out of time. Yeah, I'll start. Oh, okay. So, good morning to everyone. Uh, I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so happy that we all have gathered here to know your special purpose. So in a generation where we ask to every teenagers and people like, how are you doing? They always say, I'm fine, I'm good. But in today's generation, people are like, bro, I'm just going with the flow of life. I'm just going wherever life takes me. I really want to start this sermon, this message by saying this, because we all lost our purpose and we have decided to go wherever life takes us. You're like, I'll just go with the flow of life. And that's enough. But we forgot that we got a purpose. But we forgot that when God created us, he got a million ideas, a million things for us to do on this life. So I just want to retitle this like, what is the purpose of my life? I know we got only 10 minutes. But when you go back after listening to this sermon, to this message, I want you to have this deep feeling inside your heart that there is a purpose in my life and I have to work for it and I have to chase God each and every day and I have to do great things in this life and I have to achieve my purpose. So we are going to look into a verse in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. 
So this is a letter written by Paul to Timothy. And I am really standing in awe whenever I read these words because a whole life is in this verse. From the start until the end, what is the purpose? It's completely in this two verse. And when I got this revelation from God for the first time, I'm like, God, I have to live an awesome life for you. So we'll start with the very first line that says, in a wealthy home. I want to stop here. I want to pause here because this four words has great and deep meaning in this. In a wealthy home. Paul tells to Timothy, like, Timothy, it's on your mind. You are in a wealthy home. I just want all of you to know that your purpose starts when you know your identity, when you know who you are, when you know where you belong to. Until you know where you are and what you have to do, who you are in Christ, you cannot live the life that he has got for you. You cannot achieve the purpose that he has got for you. So he says to Timothy, Timothy, you are in a wealthy home. You are the son of the most high God. You are a daughter of the king, a son of the king. This is your identity. And this is how you will start living the life that he has got for you. This is where the purpose starts. You come to know what you have to do, how you have to live, what you have to speak, what you should be doing on this life. And you understand your identity, that I'm saved, called, I'm redeemed, I'm chosen, I'm a minister of God, a channel of his blessing, I'm victorious, I'm prosperous, I'm triumphant. When you know who you are in Christ, that's when your purpose starts. So purpose starts when you know your identity. Paul starts with that. Timothy, understand that you are in a wealthy home. And next he says, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. So let's say the utensil is us. We are the vessel. So we are already made. So the purpose is within us. When God created us, he had a purpose in his mind. And he created me. He's like, okay, this is Jeffina. And this is what I want her to do on this life. So he made me like that. He gave all the qualities and everything that I need for that. So now all I have to do is to discover who I am in Christ. What am I in Christ? I have to go take my Bible, read it each and every day, and know, okay, this is who I am in Christ, and this is what I'm going to do with my life. And we also should know that some are made of gold, some are made of silver, some are made of wood, and some are made of clay. So we are all unique. We are not the same. And we should never compare us with anyone on this life. Think of if someone is called to be a teacher and suddenly one morning she wakes up and thinks, why am I not a doctor? Her whole day will be spoiled, right? Because her whole purpose is to be a teacher. She has to go reach people, teach them and equip them in the word of God or in anything that she's teaching. And she should never come by her like, why am I not a doctor? We should understand that some are gold, some are silver, some are wood, some are clay, and it's okay. When Jesus did his first miracle in Canaan, he didn't say, go bring the most precious utensil here. Go, I need something that is made of gold, diamond, and silver. No, he said, go bring the clay jars that are used for washing the feet and fill it with water. I'm going to use it. So it's all about you having this desire to do something for God, not about what other people say to you. What do you think of yourself? You are different. You are unique. Don't compare yourself with anyone so that you can achieve your purpose on this life. And the next thing says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. So when some people will be like, OK, here comes Christian topic, some finally about purity, finally about being holy. But I just want you to know that as we were growing up on this life, we actually filled ourselves with so many other things that we should not fill ourselves with. It's all about what's inside the vessel that gives value to the vessel. What's inside it? Is it your trauma? Is it your fear? Is it your anxiety? Is it your depression? What is inside of you? Because what's inside is what's actually going to give the value for the vessel. So sometimes we actually filled ourselves with a lot of trash, fear, anxiety, depression, all the things that happened 10 years ago and 15 years ago. And we are still thinking about it. And this makes you to stop following your purpose. So each and every morning, you have to go ask God, God, fill me with your mind, fill me with your words so that I can follow my purpose. So how can you be pure if you have all this trash inside? And that's why Jesus took the cross for you. 
and that's why he took all the trash on himself and he gave beauty for all the ashes and that is his love and that is the purpose of your life so remember the purpose of your life is all about understanding the one who gave you that purpose you may not know what you have to do with your life it's okay it's okay if you don't know just go and know about jesus and as you come to know about him as you come to know about him you will really understand what you have to do with life because he will let you know he will give you that wisdom he will give you that understanding but never ever feel like i don't have a purpose you do have a purpose and you have to chase it and the next thing says you will be ready i want to pause it here i know it's not a complete sentence but it says you will be ready so look to be ready it takes time and it takes a process and it takes a process to go through you can't just be ready after hearing this message you will go back home and you cannot be a overnight obama no you have to go read your bible meditate on his word do something for god meet people and all the other things that he wants you to do there is a process and there is a timing i want to take the life of david as an example before i end this whole sermon look david he understood who he is in christ and he fought against goliath he said i'm coming in the name of the lord not because of who i am he understood his value and he never compared himself with anyone even when Saul said go wear all these army uh, clothes that you can wear he said no that's not me i just i just want stones he never compared himself with anyone and he was pure even after he sinned on his life he's like he went to god he understood that only god can make me pure only god can tell me what i have to do with my life after this because this world is full of sin so he understood it. it's only god i'm going to understand about god no matter what i did no matter how bad i feel about myself sometimes no matter sometimes i feel like life is throwing all the stones at me i'm going to go back to god and remember he was ready after going through a process and the timing he was not the he didn't become a king on the day he got anointed he was a shepherd and then he got anointed and then he was so humble even after knowing he is going to be the next thing he still went to the king and he was a musician in front of him and then even after Saul was died he still didn't go to the throne immediately he waited for the perfect time of God so in the end it's all about living the life for his glory i just want you to know this you got a purpose so the purpose of my life is something that I'm created for. And I've got to discover it by understanding who I am in Christ. Then I will be used for every good work of my master happily in his wealthy home. So I hope this message was a blessing to you. Go back to your home. Think about it and live the best life that he has got for you. You got a purpose. There is no doubt on that. You are created for it and you will glorify God. When you just go and ask him, God, what I have to do and understand who you are in him. You are special, you are precious, and you're amazing. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Jacqueline. You still have some time left. Okay. Finish a little early. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that word um, on purpose. Okay. Um, so next we have uh, Anita, is it? Yeah. Anita, if you're ready. Uh, yes, Pastor. Um, yeah. I will just share my screen. Just give me a minute. Sure. Uh, Pastor, you just have to tell me that uh, my video and audio is clear after sharing my screen. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pastor, is it visible? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. My video yeah. and audio, Pastor? Yes. Uh, I can see you as well. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank okay. you. Uh, can you start the timer, Pastor? Yeah, start it. So before starting the message, uh, let's pray and start today's message. Father, thank you for this time, Lord, as we are getting into learn from your word lord help us to understand and help us to live uh, that message into our lives lord in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Uh, 
So today I'm going to share about being salt and light to the world, the only way to live. And we have, we, uh, every believer has been called to live a life that God has called us to live. We have to be an influence on this world. And every time we are living in this world, we have to remember that we are, not, we are the part of this world, but we are not of this world. We have to live a life that pleasing to God. And God has called us to live a life that being salt and light to this world. So let's look at it. So we, we all know the familiar passage from uh, Matthew 5, 13 to 16, which says that you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we all know this passage that Jesus is uh, teaching his disciples, that they are teaching them their role on this earth. So let's look at the first part of the verse, being salt to this world. So Jesus is saying that you are the salt of the earth. And let's look at it in a, uh, briefly. In a briefly, So salt had two purposes in the time when Jesus was doing his earthly ministry. So salt was used to preserve the food. Because of lack of refrigeration, salt was used to preserve the meat, uh, which which would quickly spoil in the desert environment. So believers in Christ are preservatives to the world, preserving it from the evil inherent in the society of ungodly men whose unredeemed natures are corrupted by sin. So we all know that our we are living in a world which is corrupted by sin. So even Psalm 14, 3 says that they, they have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, not no, not one. So today we are here to preserve this world from, from evil and the sin. And second was salt was used then as now as a flavor enhancer in the same way that salt enhances the flavor of the food it seasons. The follower of Christ stand out as those who are enhanced the flavor of life in this world. Salt has a positive influence on the flavor of the food it seasons. Same way, we have to have a positive influence on the people around us. Where there is strife, we have to be we, we are we are to be the peacemakers where there is sorrow we have to be the ministers of, ministers of christ binding up the wounds and where there is hatred we are to exemplify the love of god in christ returning good for evil so we are here to be the people uh, to bring flavor in people's life and uh, influence the world around us even luke 6 35 to 36 says that we are we have to love our en enemies do good to them uh, hoping nothing in return because our reward will be great so our father is also um, he's also kind to people same way we have to be merciful just as our father so the first part of the verse says that what we, what we are and the second part of the verse says that but if the salt loses its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men so we are here in this world not of this world we should not adjust to the cultures of this world but we are here to transform the culture we are here to season this world we are here to bring influence in people's life and uh, we should not lose our flavor we should not adjust to this uh, culture around us we are here to live a life that pleasing to god we are here to live a life that god wants us to live the life of salt let's look at it how to how to be the salt or uh, in the world or how to live a life of salt first thing we have to do is to grow in saltiness or live a life of salt we have to we must be different because we are different uh, we know salt is different from the medium it's placed on we don't put veggies on veggies or meat on meat meat on meat but we add salt in that and then we then it brings the flavor and it brings the seasoning in that so same way believers are different from the world and in the world where there is dishonesty we are we have to we have to bring integrity where there is uh, people are cursing people are swearing we have to 
we have to speak edifying words where there is people are enjoying ungodly things we are we are here to uh, uh, we have we have to um, we have to bring uh, we have to do such things which is pleasing to god uh, so we must be different from the world so this morning we have to ask ourselves are we different from the world or are we same as the world so we should know the difference between us and the uh, world so we must be different second thing we have to know is we must allow ourselves to be sprinkled into ungodly places we must know uh, we must know that we are living in a world which is corrupted uh, we are uh, we uh, we have to allow ourselves in uh, wherever we are working in companies school colleges around us which is uh, everything is corrupted we have to bring righteousness being righteous is difficult sometimes it leads us to loneliness we are the only faithful ones in that place but in that place we have to be bring righteousness because we have to remember that even jesus christ has gone through loneliness in his life uh, in the time where everyone left him so such negative experiences bring positive change in our lives so second uh, third thing we have to live a life of salt will be we must commune and commune with christ we must abide in christ because the nature that we have today the salt that we have because of christ nature so we have to abide in christ and we, we uh, as verse says that we know that we have to abide in him to much uh, to bear much fruit in life so if we have to bring pe um, people to uh, people to christ or if, uh, we have to be influenced in other people's life we have to commune with christ so next is the next part of the verse is light being light to the world christ uh, jesus is referring us to the light of the world we are a city that set on hill cannot be hidden not uh, not do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house so uh, same way we have to shine before men and that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so we know that difference between light and dark darkness we should know that we are here to shine in this world we are here to uh, shine as uh, god wants us to shine we are here for a purpose that god has called us to do so we should know the difference between salt and light salt relates to our our character and salt relates to our conduct so salt deals with what we are and light deals with what what we do so god has commanded so we can see in uh, different verses god has commanded us to be the light walk as the children of light so we have to be the light around us uh, around the world wherever we are living we have to shine as light but how to do that how to be the light to the world first we have to recognize the open doors in the sense we have to recognize the opportunities that we are getting every time wherever we are going in the bus stop school colleges wherever we are we should know uh, that opportunity to uh, be the light in someone's person, be the light in someone's life that they they may uh, they should understand the love of God, understand the uh, and they should know Christ. So second thing we. And second thing is act in these moments means uh, whenever we are getting the opportunity we should take that opportunity to share god's word share god's love and bring it to bring it into action because those are the moments we get only once we can get it whenever we can get those moments we have to be there and uh, share the love of god share the uh, good news of god to them and last thing is point them to jesus we have to point these people whom, whoever we are sharing the gospel or whoever sharing the love with love of god with we should know that we have to point them to jesus because jesus is the only reason that we are doing being light in their life we should know that the source of our light is jesus and we have to point them to jesus Jesus. So I would like to conclude this uh, whole message with a small story being salt and light to the world. The only way to live is because a uh, small story. I would like to share this, uh, share a small story with you all. So I've heard this uh, story of a duck which was uh, flying and it got injured and it fell down in farmer's field and farmer um, picked it up and went uh, home. It was alive and farmer took care of it. Uh, care of that duck and uh, it was injured and farmer's children took care of that duck and same year uh, one year passed and uh, the duck uh, went 
<clears throat> went to see other ducks were flying and it tried to fly but it couldn't fly because of the injury and after that uh, that year passed away passed and uh, one more year a second year came and the second year also duck uh, it was un enjoying everything enjoying the the environment with, uh, which it was living in and uh, everything was going well the second year it tried to go back and fly but it couldn't fly because of the injury and same third year came and third year it was completely healed and it was uh it was ready to fly but it went to see other ducks who, those were there but it couldn't fly because it uh the children farmers children fed the ducks so much that it became fat and it was very happy with the environment it was living in the farmers children were playing okay playing with uh, playing with that duck everything was well and it was very comfortable it was very comfortable with the environment around it so uh, and it couldn't fly it started to live with that farmer family the same way uh, god has not called us to be the fat ducks and satisfied with the world what is going going to up uh, go up and smoke god has called us to be the eagles soaring through the clouds of holiness shaking out the salt of uh, salt of a godly life shining out the light of true uh, light of the truth of jesus christ and bring as many men as we can to glorify our our father in heaven so thank you everyone god bless each one of you thank you anita thank you for thank you. that word thank you for sharing that um yeah I think you just made it just in time to finish it. That was good. I think you were able to um, pack in quite a bit in those 12 minutes. Thank you. Right. OK, um, next we have Lyndon, Philip Martin. So Lyndon, um, if you're ready, you can start. Very small faster. Praise the Lord. Do you have a presentation? Or? Um, sorry, can you be a little more louder, please? Um, okay, uh, what now? Yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah. Okay, I'm missing an answer. Uh, do you see my presentation, by the way? Yeah, it says coming up. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, if you're ready. Uh, yeah, you're ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, good morning, all, and uh, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, greetings to you all again. Uh, so it's been a uh, very nice subject and we've been uh, you know preparing our sermons and personally this is my first sermon uh, i mean if i can say so but uh while while uh pa pastor was announcing about this uh activity or exercise that we need to you know prepare a sermon and i was reading my bible at that time during the class and i was reading um john chapter 14 and uh where I was exactly reading through the words about you know loving Jesus, and I thought, okay, why not prepare the chapter on love, loving Jesus? And uh, it's one of those basic, basic qualities or basic traits that every Christian will, uh, you know, accept that yeah, and acknowledge that yes, we need to love Jesus. But uh, I would like to take this time uh, to introspect and I would uh, expect the same from all of you as well to introspect do we love jesus now uh if you see the presentation do you love jesus it could be uh provocative maybe so uh let me change the title do we love jesus yeah so uh if so how when why do we love jesus okay so that's exactly what we are going to look into now if you think if any of you think you know it's, it's very basic and well, if everything goes all guns blazing, like no one would question about the basics. But even if you are such a tender or Cristiano Ronaldo, and if you're out of form, out of your league, then you know people would come back to the next, come back to the practice grounds where they are to prepare themselves, practice, and then you know all guns blazing. So it's about introspecting, uh, a time to introspect and see how we are, where we are. Okay, so uh, let's quickly move forward. Do we love Jesus? and why and how and when do you love jesus okay so it, it sounds obvious i'm not going to say anything out of the box so it's it's all there in the bible 
and you're all aware of it. But uh, there are two things that I can, you know, uh, separate or, you know, split this sermon. If the target audience are, you know, uh, newly uh, accepted, accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ, then uh, understanding who Jesus is is important. But if the target audience are already Christians, Bible college students, pastors, believers, that what Jesus means to us. Okay, so these are something that I would uh, request you all to you know, consider, think about it, ask for yourself what Jesus means to me. Okay, so that's exactly what we are going to look for, and as quick as possible as well. Okay, so firstly, who Jesus is. Okay, now the Bible talks about Jesus right from the Old Testament until the Revelation. So uh, I'm going to quickly go into the topic, who Jesus is, okay? And why Jesus is important to us. Why do we love Jesus, okay? So who Jesus, just a one-liner, okay? So he was the propitiation for our sins, okay? So firstly, we will acknowledge and accept the fact that we were all sinners, and yet Christ chose to die for us and give us a redemption and we could be called the sons and years and four years with Christ. Yeah. So it's very important that because of which we love Jesus. So uh and uh why do we love Jesus when we talk about uh you know how the father uh represented uh, Jesus Christ, okay? He, he, he acknowledges Jesus as, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. So it, it was, you know, uh, the, the father who loved the son so much, yet he had to, you know, uh, give up, you know, all the pain and, and you know, the, uh, the trials and tribulations that Jesus had to go through. It's just to, you know, save, save us. So it's just to save us from our sins and uh, from the death as well okay so which is why we love jesus in return what we have to do is love jesus to start with anything and everything that you have to do in christianity starts with loving jesus because that's the basic trait loving jesus so uh and jesus as well acknowledges that he loves the father and that's shown in several uh, references as well, which I would like to highlight. Uh, you know, John chapter uh, 17, verses 23 uh, and uh, 23 and 24 and 25. I'm not going to go into the scriptures deep, but uh, it's, it's just you know, uh, there for us to you know, read for ourselves. Uh, so, uh, several instances where we see in the life of Jesus that you know, the, the, the prayerful life that we led. Um, it was exemplary. It was uh, tough for us to, uh, you know, replicate the kind of spiritual life which Jesus lived on this world. But one thing which we can take from Jesus is he walked with the Father and the Father was there with Jesus. How and why and when? Well, it's because of, uh, you know, the, the the connection, the connectivity which Jesus had with the Father, the, the, you know, the time at which he prayed early in the morning, you know, midnight, midday, and even for, you know, any deliverance prayer, uh, you know, when, when he's looking uh, for, I mean, at, the, at the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, he had to cry out to the Father, and even when someone's hurting him, uh, you know, poking him with a spear, he still had to, you know, still Jesus had to cry out, God forgive them. So, so it's, that's the kind of relationship which Jesus had. Why have you not forsaken me, he says, the day before, and on the day when he was, uh, he was crucified, he says, Lord, Father, forgive them. Yeah, so that's the connectivity that Jesus had with his Father. So what I'm trying to tell you is, okay, so it's, it's not when everything is happy, and I know Sunny that you no, know, we, we, we love Jesus, but even during trials and tribulations, are we loving Jesus? Are we loving God as much as He would want us to? Okay, and uh, why we love Jesus? Remember uh, the disciples and you know the 70 odd disciples, you know, they went on a field trip or a mission trip, you know, shared the gospel, healed the sick. Uh, cast out demons. They came back. You know, they were very happy. They were. It was a pride moment, but uh, Jesus uh, asks or informs Simon uh, Peter, and he, he calls uh, Simon. Okay, so that's that's one alarming sign where he says, "Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like 
wheat. And even then, uh, Jesus says, he, he, he has prayed for all those disciples that they will not fall a prey to the temptations and the trials around. So uh, first, uh, to talk about what love is. Okay, now we, we're talking about love, we're talking about Jesus' love, but uh, to understand more about what love is, in, in Greek Bible, there are four types of love that uh, you know is being demonstrated, but what uh, Jesus' love, what God's love is, is demonstrated or you know meant with the term agape. Okay, so it's the unconditional love or the, the purest form of love or the willful or you know sacrificial love that uh, one can exhibit towards another and it can only be called God's love. It cannot be called another way. Okay, so, um, and the Bible says in Matthew uh, chapter 22, verse 37 to 40, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. Okay, so why do we love Jesus? Because it's a commandment from God. And um, in John chapter 14, uh, there are more than three verses. I mean, there are three verses uh, as well in 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 5, where you uh, know the Bible says it's, it's a commandment that you follow. And only when you follow this commandment, you know that you love Jesus. And Jesus will know, God will know that you love him in, in response to that. So obeying a commandment is what uh, you know is why we love Jesus. Firstly, you know, we acknowledge we are sinners. We acknowledge the redemption that Christ gave us on the cross, and it's the commandment that we have uh, that we need to love Jesus, and because of which we love Jesus. And he also goes on to say in John 13, 34 and 35, new commandment I give you that love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So it's because Jesus loved us, we ought to love him back. So that's the response that we got. Uh, no, we have to no, uh, deliver. And I also uh, think often that you know both love and respect are reciprocative. Okay, so if one someone says I love you, you say in response I love you too. Someone says uh, you know uh, someone respects you, you respect them back in return. So and and who, who I mean, there's no one who who's uh, more worthier than you know loving Jesus because he has given us so much more, uh, way more than we could you know, ask or expect. And uh, in, in, in 1 John chapter 4, 10, uh, 11, and verses 19, it says, In this is love, that not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And uh, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We love him because he first loved us. And there's a Bible verse in Romans where it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ chose to die for us. And you know that's the greatest of all why we, you know, we love Jesus. Uh, and... A psalmist says in Psalm 63, verse 3, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So it's 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 acknowledge. Okay, the first thing what even God would expect from us is because I've loved my son and daughter so much, will 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 not my son and daughter love me back? Yeah. So if that is the case, are we loving Jesus? Okay, that's the first question. And why we love Jesus? It's because he chose to die for us. He chose to redeem us. He chose us as his sons and daughters, his co heirs uh, One more minute, uh, Lyndon. Okay, okay. So I, I was just halfway done with my uh, with the topic, so I will quickly run through. Uh, so how and when we love Jesus, how we love Jesus. Um, so by our actions and deeds, we can love Jesus. So uh, I have a reference for this, uh, how we love Jesus. When I say actions, uh, 1 John 3.18 says, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. We are to love others first, okay? And if, if if uh, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do you, do not even the tax collectors do the same? It's what is mentioned in Matthew five forty six. So how we love Jesus is through our prayers, regular prayers, reading the Bible scriptures, study and learn the scriptures that includes uh, memorizing um, some prayers. Yeah, and scriptures. that's the time. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not done yet, but yeah, thanks all. Just uh, you know, 
Thank love you. Love helps us as much as you can. Thank, Thank you. you, Lyndon. Thank you. Um, just want to remind all of us who presented today um, to upload the outline and the presentation, please, so we can go through that. Thank you all for presenting uh, success, Jeffina. Then we had Anita and Lyndon. Um, Aradhana is also here. Um, Aradhana, uh, do you have that? Uh, are you ready to present today? We can. Um, Aradhana? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, uh, did anyone catch what Aradhana was saying? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. OK, OK, I see it. OK, you're not ready yet. Fine, Aradhana. So uh, you know, coming um, Thursday, that will be our last session. So we have a few people who are already lined up. Um, for presenting, and I will add uh, Aradhana also. Um, so we have Paul, Leah Lama, Abu Bakr, Lubega, Rubika, and uh, Aradhana. So six, right? Um, so it will definitely be, be more than the session's um, duration uh, for all six to present. Uh, if all six are presenting. So just want to request us to stay on for some more time beyond our 50 minutes uh, for next um, for our next session on Thursday, right? OK, so thank you all for presenting. And all the best to those who are preparing to present um, next, um, next uh, on Thursday. Uh, looking forward to that as well. OK, God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.